Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the direct comparison test for solving series. And personally, out of the, the 10 tests we have for series, this is my least favorite one. I think it's the hardest to remember. I literally use it as a last resort when everything else has failed. And honestly, it's the most brute force way of proving that a series converges or diverges. So here's how we use the direct comparison test. First, you start with your series, some series A sub n, and the starting point doesn't matter. And the first thing you're going to do is you are going to guess, literally guess, whether or not this series converges or diverges. And if you guess wrong, then you'll eventually have to start the whole problem over again. And honestly, the more series problems you solve, the better and better you get at guessing whether the series converges or diverges. So that's my motivation to you. Just keep practicing and eventually it will make more sense. So after you guess converge or diverge, you are going to compare your series A sub n to a known series B sub n. In other words, any series that you know converges or diverges depending on what your guess was. And my advice to you is Choose a p-series because those are the easiest ones to compare to. For instance, 1 over n, 1 over n cubed, one of these. These are like the best ones to compare to. And then in order for our series to converge, if our guess was converges, then you need to prove that the absolute value of a sub n is less or smaller than the absolute value of your known series b sub n for every term or at least as n approaches infinity. Maybe the first term or two terms are not smaller, maybe they're bigger, but you clearly see the trend that as n gets really, really, really big, a sub n is gonna be smaller. And then quite the opposite, if your guess was diverges, then the absolute value of a sub n has to be greater than the absolute value of, of the one you were comparing it to, b sub n. And again, it has to be greater for every term or at least as n goes to infinity. And in a lot of ways, just memorizing this part is the hardest part of the problem because I always get confused whether it needs to be less than or greater than, or if my guess was converges or diverges. But assuming you remember this part and you pass either of these tests, depending on if you are converging or diverging, then the result is not converges or diverges explicitly. The result is a sub n does whatever b sub n does. So in other words, if your guess was converges and you picked b sub n is a series that converges and you did the direct comparison test and you got the result for converges, which was the first one, a sub n less than b sub n for every term, then that means both series, a sub n and b sub n, both converge. And so this is not super easy and it's definitely an art at deciding which series to compare to, but let's look at some examples so that we can start getting the hang of it. So first, let's say I have the series from n equals one to infinity of one over two n squared plus four. And I look at this and I think to myself, hmm, will this converge or diverge? Well, I would say it's most similar to one over n squared, my p series. So that's what I'm going to compare to. And since I know that one over n squared converges because it's a p series, where p equals two. So I know this series is going to converge. I'm comparing it to this one. And since my guess is converges, and this one is my a sub n, the original is always a sub n, and this is my b sub n, what I'm comparing to, I need to prove that a sub n is less than b sub n for every term. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list out my terms for a sub n. Like when I plug in one here, for n first, because I'm starting at one. One over two times one squared plus four, that's gonna be six, or really one sixth. And then plus the next term when I plug in two, one over two times two squared plus four, that's gonna be one over 12. Then the next one is three, so one over two times three squared plus four, that's gonna be one over 22. And that's good enough for me. The first three terms are usually enough. Now writing out b sub n, remember b sub n was the one over n squared. So I plug in one for that, I'm just gonna get one over one. I'm not gonna reduce that because I'm just comparing it to the above. 
The second term is going to be 2 squared, so 1 fourth, and the next one is plus 1 ninth, and you get the picture. Now, looking at all these terms, who's smaller? And the answer is my a sub n is smaller because its denominator is bigger every time. And so what that means, I'm saying a sub n is less than b sub n, which was the condition I needed. And because this is true, then I say by the direct comparison test, both series converge. And that is my answer. So as you can see, direct comparison test, not terrible especially if you know what you're doing. It's actually not too bad. But one thing I will say is kind of disappointing about the direct comparison test is that if, let's say, I had a similar series, if it was 1 over n squared minus 4, and I compare it to 1 over n squared, as n goes to infinity, if I write out these terms for a n and b n, and let's just say this is the series from n equals 3 to infinity, because if I start at 2, it's going to be zero in the denominator, so let's start at three. If I list out my terms for this, it's gonna be one over three squared minus four, so one fifth plus, next term is one twelfth plus one over 21 plus dot dot dot, and then b sub n is the same thing as before, but starting with the third term, one ninth plus one sixteenth plus one twenty fifth plus dot dot dot. As you can see, the p series even though they're both n squared, this is not gonna work. a sub n is now larger, which means you can't do the direct comparison test for this one. But honestly, you can do the direct comparison test, you just can't use one over n squared as your comparison. What would you have to compare to? You'd probably have to compare to one over n to the 1.5 power, and no one wants to do that. So that's why personally, I don't love the direct comparison test. I think it's just a worse version of the limit comparison test for a lot of problems. But here's two more problems we're going to look at today where direct comparison test will work pretty well and limit comparison test will not work at all. So for this next one, I have the series from n equals zero to infinity of n times three halves to the n power. Now I look at this, it almost looks like a geometric series, except there's this extra n right here. If this were me, I would prove this using the ratio test, but if I was forced to use the direct comparison test, fine, then I would compare this to the geometric series three halves to the n, which I know this is a geometric series where r equals three halves, which is greater than one, so this will diverge. So in other words, this is gonna be my guess. My guess is going to be diverges. And this is my a sub n here, this is my b sub n here, and since my guess is diverges, I'm gonna list out all the terms, and I want my a sub n to be bigger this time. So if I list out for a sub n starting with zero, actually if I plug in zero, that's just gonna make the whole thing zero, interesting, plus plugging in n equals one, I would get three halves, so plus three halves, and then plus the next term is gonna be two times three halves squared, which is 18 fourths, and yes, I can reduce that a little bit, but I'm not going to. And then I'll do one more. If I plug in three, then it's three times three halves cubed, which is three times 27 over eight, or 81 over eight. And then I'll put plus dot, 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 because I get the picture. Now for b sub n, if I do b sub n, I'm starting with three halves to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. Then the next term, which is just three halves to the one, plus three halves squared, nine fourths, plus three halves cubed, 27 eighths, plus dot, dot, dot. Now, as you can see, the last two terms are bigger for a sub n. These terms are equal, which is fine. And then this term is actually bigger for b sub n. So is this okay? Did I prove that it diverged using direct comparison tests? Because it looks like it's switching who's bigger. And the answer is, as n gets incredibly large, as it's going to infinity, a sub n is larger than b sub n for every term. And so for that reason, we can say, by the direct comparison test, both series diverge. And there we go. So hopefully you don't have any questions on either of these. If you do, please post them in the comments. And now I have just one more for us today. It's the series 
from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over quantity natural log of n squared. So for this one, I really would use the direct comparison test because it's the only test that I know of that would work here. And so first we have to take a guess. Now, I have no idea if this converges or diverges. That's actually a lie, I, I do know. But let's say my guess is that it converges because of the squared and I can compare this to one over n squared. Fair enough. So then this is my a sub n and this is my b sub n. And if I'm guessing converges, then that means this has to be smaller for every value of n, starting at two. So that means it's going to be one over natural log of two squared plus one over natural log of three squared plus one over natural log of four squared plus dot dot dot. And as you can see, the problem here is that I don't know what these values are. And if I have a calculator, I can, you know, use a calculator. But if I don't have a calculator, I'm in trouble. So the good news is I don't need to know the exact value. I just need to know whether it's bigger or smaller than b sub n, which is going to be 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared. And the reason why I'm writing it like this instead of saying 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth plus dot 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 is because it's a lot easier to compare these when they look similar. Now here's the thing, natural log of 2, natural log of 3, and natural log of 4 are all smaller, smaller than the b sub n ones. And that sounds good, right? Because I wanted smaller. But remember, a smaller denominator means that the result is bigger. So in other words, what I'm saying, and you can prove this with a calculator, is that a sub n is going to be bigger for all values of n, which is not what I wanted. And so that means either I chose a bad one to compare to, I should have chosen another series to compare to, or it means it doesn't converge, this actually diverges. And I'm going to tell you the correct answer is that we should have guessed diverges. So I'm going to change my guess to diverges, and I'm going to compare to b sub n equals 1 over n, which is the harmonic series, because this just happens to be the easiest one to prove it. So if I list out a sub n again, nothing changes. It's still natural log of 2 squared plus 1 over natural log of 3 squared plus 1 over natural log of 4 squared plus dot dot dot. And then b sub n is just 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus dot dot dot. Now this one's really hard to prove without a calculator. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to try and prove it without a calculator. In other words, let me plug in a sub n in my calculator to see what numbers I get. So for instance, the first few terms after plugging in my calculator are 2.08 plus 0.829 plus 0.520 plus dot dot dot. And then b sub n, just keeping the same decimals, 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth is 0.5, which is smaller, plus 0.33, which is smaller, plus 0.25, which is smaller. And I wanted this to be smaller to prove that it diverges. Or you could say that a sub n had to be bigger, which either way, it's true. And even if you choose a really big number like n equals 50, this will still hold true that a sub n is bigger and b sub n is smaller. And so therefore we can say by the direct comparison test, both series diverge. And as a matter of fact, whenever natural log shows up in the denominator, there's a good chance that the series diverges. That's just a good thing to memorize. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.